Hello my friends, so we are back talking about Power BI relationships. This is part three in our video and we're going to look at how to fix missing values in the lookup table using the data table. So let me um, tell you a, a little bit more about the scenario. So what's happening here is uh, we saw this in the earlier video, but I'm going to give you a recap is that let's look at a relationship first. So here we have a relationship between uh, colors and the product table. And if we look at the product table that has all of these colors, which we are linking to our lookup table color, which doesn't have some colors, so it's missing some colors. So again, if you look at the master, this is the lookup table. It doesn't have all the colors that are in the data table, and you can see the ones that are missing. They are silver, black, NA, and multi. Now, of course, in the last video, we mentioned that one way to fix that is you just go to the source. Wherever this table is being sourced from, you go there and, and, and fix that. But the challenge is that sometimes you don't have control over that. I mean, you're sourcing it from something which is maybe part of a warehouse and either it's going to take too long for them to fix it and add those values or in some cases they might say no because often uh, these tables are not just being used by your team they might be used by other people as well and what works for you may not work for somebody else it might mess something up for example in this case they might say that oh you know these are not true colors silver black is not really a color and uh, multi is definitely not a color. NA is not a color, right? So, so we 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 can't. It's not the right thing to do. So they can really turn you down. So, so again, and and that's why Power BI is so amazing because you're not at a dead end. You can still fix it in your model. So that's what we're going to look at today. My name is Avi, and if you are just getting started or keep getting stuck in Power BI, then this channel is for you uh, because you're gonna find here videos with simple explanations that are, that help you go from beginner to pro. So make sure to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss out a thing. And while you're at it, make sure to also follow me on LinkedIn. That's where I'm most active. All right, folks, let's get started. And as I said earlier, this is part three. So we're going to link to the part one, which covers relationships not working at all. Part two, which is relationships kind of work, but they're missing values. Um, and now we're on to part three. Now, this is all based on a question asked by one of our Learn Power BI members, Lance. So, so thank you, Lance, for your question. And let's dive into the scenario. So again, in, in our scenario, we don't have all the colors here. So what we're going to go here is go to our kitchen of Power BI, which is the query editor. All right, so here we're going to start with a product table and do a reference to that. Now, again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to combine the colors which are in our colors table. Those are good, but there are some that are in the product table in the data table and they're missing. So we're, we're focusing on that. So let's uh, go to our query editor again. So in here, product, I'm going to change it. I'm going to call uh, colors, right? So I just changed the name product colors. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep only the color column, remove all the other columns, and I'm going to come in here and um, well, remove duplicates. If I can find it, there it is. And now what I can do is I, I'm, I can, uh, let's uh, merge it with the colors table. So I'm going to come in here and uh, merge with the colors table. I'm going to select the columns and it's saying that some of them are matching, some of them are not matching. Now those are the ones that I'm after. Now if you really want, you can find an option in here which will only show the rows that are in product but not in colors. And that option is that should be this one, left anti. But I'll tell you, I, you know, I, I often don't use that, uh, at least in this case. You don't have to. I just do the regular old merge. That way I don't have to worry about the merge type. And then I just do processing here. Again, it's just a personal preference. I find this to be simpler. So again, uh, when I'm doing a merge, I don't worry about all of this join kind. I just let it do it. The default, which is good for me. And then when I come in here, I expand the color. That's the only one. So again, 
what I'm saying is that match it, match the product colors with this color, and then show me what you found, right? So, and and so again, I like seeing this because it shows me step by step. It sometimes makes it easier to debug, and I can see very clearly here that you know these things did match. Uh, now there is one problem with black and blue, which uh, we had fixed earlier. Um, and I don't know what happened. Oh, uh, I think I overwrote those changes. So let me quickly fix that. Okay, so I added the trim and clean, which I had accidentally removed, and now we can see that it is matching those. But then these uh, multi uh, and uh, silver black and NA, they're all showing up as null. So again, I like doing it this way. But now I can filter it down to just that. So I can say, yep, I only want to keep the null because those are the ones which exist in product colors but are not in my lookup table right so again now think about this we have the color table which is this and we have the product colors and all we have to do is to append these two together so I can go to either table and what I'm gonna do is just say append queries as new and I'll say um, colors and the product colors and this is the final color table. Now of course I don't want to change the table name so I'm going to go back here and just change it to original and come back here to append one and this is the new colors table and what I'll also do is that really these are throwaway tables. By the way I love looking at the query dependencies view so let's take a look at that and how we are building the the final colors table so now if I click on colors you can see that it is coming from source but we knew that source wasn't good enough so we are getting that data but then you can see that we also uh, go into the product table and if there are missing values we're getting grabbing them from the product colors table as well which is incredible so uh, so um, uh, right and you can see kind of the multi NA and silver black here but we don't need these tables so these ones that I showed you in the query dependency view, these are just throwaway tables. These are just there to um, for us to be able to generate the colors table, which we have, right? So that's the only that we need. So again, what I did was I right click and and unchecked this enable load box. So because I don't need this in the model. Okay, so all we have to do now is hit close and apply, and it's going to be loaded back into our data. All right, our data load is done, and uh, but our table kind of went away. That can happen sometimes when you, you know, we really change the table that we loaded. So originally we were loading this one, and then we have a new one, even though it's called the same name as before. Power BI kind of detects that. Uh, so all we have to do is just bring it back again, and the uh, relationship is already detected. And if you go back here, and again, we can remove the color reference and bring back the color from here. And there we go. We have no blank values. Now, let's talk about a few things here. For one, if we look at the color table, you would notice that we got the color, but the other values are blank. Now, there can be two ways to go about this. Either you can go to uh, your query editor again and just put like NA or something, some, some value to indicate that it's not available. So you can put some value in there. Or, it, well, the only other option could be is that if somehow the data table, which is, again is in this case product table, that's where we were sourcing the colors from, somehow has the additional information. Like somehow it has the color and the color RGB and other columns, um, uh, you know, the swatch and all that. Then, of course, you can bring those columns in as well. Right? So uh, those, uh, those are the key options. And the other part was that this this could be problematic. So again, I kind of brushed it aside and I said, oh, we changed the table, so the table was gone. But you notice that what the impact was. For one, we needed to bring in the new table, uh, create the relationship, but the biggest part was that my report, if you remember this, this was broken, right? So when I clicked on this, the field was kind of broken. Uh, and uh, so how do you avoid that? How do you avoid when you're redoing a table and doing a new table in its place? How do you avoid the scenario where 
everything gets wiped out so imagine if this was a report where you had 20 pages and you had uh, you were using the the old color stable in all of those you don't want all of that to break and have to go in and fix each one of that so that one is actually a pretty quick tip we're going to cover it in one of our future videos um, so yeah i'll see you then and hey as i said at the beginning we're focused on the beginners so if you're just starting out or keep getting stuck then follow us here or even better join us in learnpowerbi.com the amazing community where you can hang out with um, all of our members all right take care and power on